show, but this is going to be a, a general um, overview of what it takes to make uh, typefaces for Indian languages. I come from an engineering background, so I'm not a designer for 30 years, I've been mean, engineering for a lot of fun, but getting into the design space today. So I'll talk about the, the challenges we have had in the past and some of the things that we are looking forward to doing uh, going forward. Now, what are complex scripts? Um, since this is happening in Southeast Asia, I, I was, I was uh, thinking that you may not be familiar with the kind of scripts that are available out there uh, that we group uh, together in complex scripts. Um, so these are some of the features that I took from the Microsoft uh, WP website where they define what complex scripts are, what are the properties of uh, the scripts for it to be called a complex script. Uh, in India, for example, uh, for instance, the countries that have got lots of scripts, not just native to uh, the land, but also scripts that are important from neighboring countries. It also uses the Arabic script for their Urdu language. Um, they also have new scripts that were invent invented for uh, uh, younger languages. They definitely use Latin uh, quite a bit. So, text going in both directions is very common in India. Um, contextual shaping is um, uh, more prevalent in uh, the Indian scripts than you can see than you see in, in uh, South Asian scripts. So they are used in uh, the script in this region as well. Um, Conjuns is something that um, uh, that varies from script to script. In some scripts, the, the entire shape of letters change when they merge with uh, neighboring letters. In some scripts, the naming letters take a smaller form, especially South Asian scripts like Burmese and Khmer. The, the, second, the, the, the following letters take a smaller form, they either go underneath or the, to the side, lose some elements of it to merge with uh, the base letter. But in most languages in India, they, both the, the joining letters lose their uh, shapes and take a completely different form altogether. So that's uh, quite a complex thing to understand, especially when you are designing typefaces for languages that you don't speak and it can look very weird sometimes uh, and how would people understand this? It appears before the introduction of Unicode which actually, which clearly defines what a character is and what a glyph is uh, people didn't understand the difference so when, when I first learned Tamil, which is my mother tongue in Malaysia we learned that there are 247 characters in Tamil um, but when you look at the Unicode chart, there are only like 18 and 12 characters defined and oversimplifying it. I said, what happened to all my other things? What happened to all my ooh sounds? What happened to all my I sounds? Um, well, they are, they are not encoded as characters. They actually uh, form on the fly when they see characters next to each other. Um, they have very specialized word break and justification. You can't break the word anywhere you want. Not just linguistically, but also uh, visually, you can't break them because you will lose uh, the shaping of the letter if you break a conjunct halfway. Um, handling illegal character combinations, this happens in all complex scripts, including those in Southeast Asia, where you can't have certain letters uh, uh, coming together uh, in a series. I used to work on high input methods. And we used to type the E, um, the vowel sign E. And you keep typing the vowel sign, you see the vowel sign E stacking up on top of the base letter. Some of these are not allowed. And so you, you, know, you represent the dot with the and things like that. Um, and there must be fallback fonts. You know, in Latin, this is taken for granted that you don't even think about it. And if somebody types a letter A, you're guaranteed to get a letter A. Whereas uh, in other scripts, you must have a fallback font um, specified by the operating system so you can get some character when the user types a particular language. So, those are some of the characteristics that define a complex uh, language, complex script. They are spread all over uh, Asia and Southeast Asia. They are originated from a common script called the Burmese script. Today, I'm just going to focus on some of those that are in purple, which are mostly in India, and Tamil, which is um, officially spoken in Singapore and widely taught in the 
Now, the process, uh, Brad Mitchell told me about this, and I asked him what does that mean by you speak? Is what, is, what are the things you do? Um, you, I can't speak all those languages. People in India do. I mean, they can't speak all those languages. But they can't read um, uh, and understand and comprehend uh, what uh, all those languages say. And, and they are not native to that unless you keep seeing them very often. So, what's the design process? So, let me talk about what it was. Uh, up to like say five to ten years ago, and what it is now. So that the next two slides are just going to talk about this. If you want to design, you, you probably choose a script first, right? Let's say the Devanagari script, which is the most commonly used in India. Then you decide what are the languages you want to support. But, but just because you're doing a Devanagari font, it doesn't mean that you're designing a font that a, a font for all languages that are written in Devanagari. Not necessarily the case. Just like doing ASCII doesn't mean you can write, you can design a font for all, like, all of the European languages. There are certain characters, there are certain characters that behave differently in different languages. Um, there is, then you choose a repertoire. Which are the characters you want to include in your font? Uh, there are, many, if you, I mean, a lot of people just take the Unicode document and look at it and say, ha, ah, these are the characters I want to do. Right. Well, that's good. If you can do all of those characters, it's fantastic. But a lot of those that are defined in the Unicode standard are historical. Right? Because Unicode's goal is to, is to encode every character that, is, that was ever used, in use. I don't know whether they are good to see that the characters are going to be used in the future. So a lot of those that are encoded in the Unicode uh, Long, of course, you're doing, you're doing a nodal science type font where you want, you don't want a tofu to appear, then that's fine. But not all characters need to be designed. Um, when I design some of those, or when I include some of those characters in the font, and people ask me, why is that you're including this? It's no longer in use. And I said, you put it there because you want to use the font with the characters to say that it's no longer in use. So when you type the text, you say that this form of the letter is no longer in use, you need that form to say that this form is no longer in use. So just like my second speaker was saying that where uh, where they're going to use it for, I don't know. <laughs> but you know, sometimes it's, it's, it's probably necessary to put that in. So you decide on that. <coughs> A typical example is <coughs> the simplification of the Devonite system. Um, Devonite script was formerly used uh, OS script used to write Sanskrit, which is like <coughs> one of the soft. <coughs> Can I do OS script? Give me a second. What? Okay, so that was a script to write um, Sanskrit, which became the origin of many languages. In Sanskrit, you use a lot more conjunct than you use today in Devanagari script. In you know, Devanagari, you have like half form. You split the letter by half to say that this is actually joining with the next letter. But in, in Sanskrit, they all form different, different glyphs uh, uh, for very many combinations. So you decide which are the ones you want to support. Then you do the design. <coughs> then after that, you have another team of people who then work on the engineering to make sure all of these pieces fit together. That you know all the shaping plates, all the shaping happens correctly where it needs to happen. And in the shaping, there are many uh, uh, elements of the shaping. There are ligatures where characters combine to form different uh, shapes all together. There are uh, there's reordering <coughs> in Thai and in Lao uh, scripts. The, the way the character is encoded is you don't see reordering of the marks. You don't see reordering of the, the vowel sign. <clears throat> but in all the other languages, including Burmese, including Khmer, you do a lot of reordering work. There are insertions, you need to insert new glyphs, and then you need to position marks. All these things are taken care of by the engineer. But the good news today is, I mean, this was the challenge we had when I first worked on a set of the Indian language script, my challenge was not so much on design, but in getting it to work. 
because we did not get enough system level support to do all of this work. Right? So we have to do uh, all of that uh, to make sure that it is rendered correctly and the user is reading the text that he's going to be aware. But today, thanks to apps like Glyphs, since they are a sponsor today, so, <coughs> so thanks to uh, tools like Glyphs, they have handled most of this for you. In fact, for some scripts, they have handled all of that for you. Just like uh, you design Latin by just drawing the letters in the proper cubicles, in the proper uh, cells, you do the same with Indian language scripts. You draw those letters, and all of the shaping logic, the open type logic, is handled uh, for you by Glyph. Not for all of the designs, but for a common design, if you're doing a simple uh, design with not too many features, uh, enough uh, legibility for the user, then Glyphs, the, the, the features that are given to you by Glyphs is good enough. Right? You just fill those in, and that takes care of it. But <clears throat> with that taken care of, with uh, the operating system providing you support for all of this correct rendering of the text, so that the user can read it without any confusion. The focus can now go on to design. And that is what I see happening in the last um, you know, couple of years, uh, where people in India are trying to look at doing some good design. Unlike Latin, we don't have a history of, we don't have a good type of, a rich typographic history. It has always been a challenge of getting it to work. The initial, if you read, uh, any of the printing history of India. It was all about fixing issues. How do I get the, 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 the marks to span across that many letters? How do you do that spacing? How do you curl this to make sure that these are joined? So all these issues were, I mean, those were the focus of uh, people who were cutting punches, who were designing pipes uh, in the early days. Even in digital typefaces. I was doing bitmap fonts because there was no other way to get uh, things to combine. Um, we were hacking fonts, we were hacking our own encoding. Um, but today, those issues are taken care of. I mean, this is very different from uh, the issues we had in Thailand. Because I think it was 15 to 20 years ago, um, Apple had a workshop in Singapore where they taught uh, people how to do. Um, or design packages for the next platform. And when they were talking about the issues with, say, Malayalam scripts or Tamil scripts, the Thai people were confused. Why are you teaching us all this? We don't need all that. Right? This, this is our idea. Because we didn't have that many issues uh, in, in Thai, even Laos, you know, and uh, But today, uh, we can focus a bit more on design uh, to make uh, good uh, Thai pages for Indian language. The underlying mechanism handles all of the complex issues quite well for us. So, we talk about the design process. These are the, the, the components that I would like to look at. Uh, first, we need to understand the history of the writing system. What, was the, what were the tools used and the medium on which they were written on? So, and to get to give itself to, or to give a native look and feel for the script for the design. So that the people who are reading that um, feel connected with it. The previous speaker was talking about the loopless high letter, where a native speaker, when he looks at it for the first time, he has a culture shock in what is this, right? So likewise, if you design something that a native person cannot feel connected with, then that's not that high is not going to be very successful. So we need to have that understanding. There isn't enough materials available. Um, there are some research papers published by students um, and you know a couple of books uh, that are very rare and even those books are written in that respective <coughs> native script and very few uh, that you can find in English. So that's one area um, where a lot of research can take place. Then all that contributes to the design. People like Fiona Ross, people like John Hudson, they've done quite a lot of research um, in coming up with design uh, elements for Five pictures that they have developed. It's also good to look at how it is used today because the tools have changed, the medium has changed, so the way people write has also changed. Um, what is native to the people who are using those scripts? 
and, and what are the features that are borrowed. There are quite a lot of features in Indian languages that are borrowed, and I'll talk about some of them. All right. Um, this is the broad variation between two big, broad families of Indian script. We have got the Northern Indian family of script and the Southern Indian family of script. Um, the Northern Indian family is where you actually see it showing contrast, that, that is native to the script. Because it was written with a V pen, I'll talk about it shortly. Um, it goes from top down, left, right, and there's a headline that connects uh, characters that form a word. But in South Indian script, it, it, it was originally written with a pointer, a stylus on a, on a palm leaf, and you have all those loops that are connected. Um, and, and each character in the South Indian uh, family of scripts, each character is written with, without a pendant, so you can finish a character from the issue. So that's important, that affects the design of the letters. So I'll show you the example. This is, the, this is a page taken from the book, um, uh, the name is shown below. Um, there's a difference between the way um, uh, the Northern Indian scripts are written with a V pen and the Latin scripts that are written with a quill pen. Uh, the difference is the angle in which they were holding the pen uh, when they write. That's the cut angle as well as the holding angle. And the two diagrams up there shows you the differences, and which is why when you look at the Devanagari script, the angle of the of the of the straight line always is in the opposite direction to the Latin script. So if you use, if you try to use the Latin uh, calligraphic pen in the way the Latin calligraphic pen is helped to design the Latin script, you will not get a basic appearance of the letter at all. And that's how uh, the Devanagari letters appear. This is from Devanagari uh, MT, which is the native micro app. Uh, if you look at it, the contrast is very native, people can look at this, people can feel very comfortable with this um, when you produce it with the right here. The South Indian languages are written with a palm leaf, uh, and you see that the, that the tags are all down there. It's very difficult to draw straight, straight lines, especially horizontal straight, straight lines. You can't draw a headline, for example, because you would cap it. The D would be torn if you do that, right? So the medium uh, influences the type uh, of the letter. And each letter is completed with a single pen stroke. So you don't like there's a you don't lift up a pen and then continue in another. And you also don't see characters that are combined. So there, there is no cursive form that combines, that joins the letters together. Neither in the South Indian script nor in the North Indian script. Okay. And that's uh, the result. This is my type case in micro -act. You see that each letter is drawn without a pen. Pen. Now, South Indian scripts usually don't have a contrast, right? Because they are written with a pen. It's not with, there, there is no calligraphic history for South Indian scripts. But you will see high cases like this for text where there is contrast. How did this come? This is actually not native to the script. So people have gotten used to it because the first printing uh, was done in India, I think it was in the 16th century. Um, and the typefaces were originally trying to mimic the letter forms in the palm leaf, but they were too big and they did not fit in. So they sent the designs all the way back to Europe, and people in Europe designed uh, these form typefaces for Tamil, which was one of the earliest scripts to get printed in India. And so they used a contrast which was more used in Latin scripts. Um, and they applied that to uh, Tamil and Teji. Hey, look at that here. Well, so why it is thicker in one side and thinner the other side? Nobody knows. I don't know. They probably thought the upward strokes would go thin and the downward strokes would go thick. But there is no such, there's no logic to it either because there are some downstrokes that are also thin. But if you change that and say, hey, these downstrokes should be actually thick and not thin, people will get confused because that's not what they're used to. So it's, it's a lot of familiarity that is uh, seeped into the usage as people got gotten used to it. So it, it may not be native in the history of the way the script is written, but today people are used to seeing and reading text like this. The other um, uh, thing that I've introduced is the slant angle. I would 
like to call it italic, but it's a slant angle. Um, it's only the camel effect that it, that the design slanted. The rest of it you will see upright. I, that too, we don't know why. If you see modern documents that are handwritten, yeah, there is some slant in there. But the original, the native documents during the time of the palm leaves, um, it, you know, the slant is not so obvious. But you know, they probably took that as, hey, this is usually read, uh, written slanted, and they have uh, done it that way. But there's not no longer um, a requirement uh, to also see upright. Uh, my, my font for macOS for the text was designed upright. There is no need. That's the people have got used to it, and you see both uh, forms in here. So script by feature, I de de uh, divide the design into three different uh, groups. One is the script with the headline. There are only three: Devanagari, Gurmukhi, and Bengali. They all have a headline. Um, the headline actually connects letters that form a word. Um, then you have the uh, the two scripts. You know, they, you are saying that they had a headline, but it disappeared. That's the Gujarati and the Oriya script. And the Oriya script, all of the letters have a curve on top of them. That was supposed to be the headline, so they don't join with the with the curve of the next letter. Um, and then the southern scripts have a lot of roundedness in them, a lot of loops, and because of the medium that it was written in. And another one that I'm going to have an example now is the Bengali cursive. Bengali has two different written forms. One is the calligraphy form that you see on top. And the other one is the cursive form where the headline is written, drawn with every letter, and every letter doesn't look as complete as it looks on top. And the whole word is written with without a pen, uh, without a pen, just as you would write that in Latin. Right? Uh, that's very interesting to see. It's so incomprehensible <coughs> if you're if you're not a native Bengali speaker, but the people in uh, who, who speak Bengali will be able to understand that better. I've not seen any typeface designed for that uh, uh, writing system yet. That's one of the challenges I'd like to take the next year of these days. Now. There's one thing I want to point out here that can be challenging when designing typefaces for these scripts. Unlike Latin and probably even Thai and even you know Southeast Asian scripts like Lao, Thai, uh, Khmer, uh, Burmese, or Myanmar, you don't see that many um, strokes that cross over after a word goes before. Right? The Northern Indian strokes uh, have some, but not that many. But it's not that complicated. They really can be designed very nicely because you don't have too many overflowing strokes crossing over and, uh, one another. I'll show you an example in the next slide. But if you look at the something um, well, that could be the wrong character, the, the third character in the in the first row of the something inscript, that's from Telugu. But the rest of it you see that the, the, the strokes cross over. And you will see some with two decks, some with three decks. Some can go into four decks. And that becomes really complicated when you when you design a font for a bolder way. Right? Now this is the Bengali form that I was talking to you about. This is the handwriting of a famous poet called Rabindranath Tagore, who actually wrote the National Anthem of India as well as the National Anthem of Bangladesh. But he didn't know it was going to become the National Anthem of Bangladesh when he wanted to write it. That's his handwriting. Um, this is Bengali in cursive form, where all letters join uh, with each other in a word, and there's no there's no visible headline. So, <clears throat> because the, the the original typefaces designed for Indian scripts were done uh, by people who are doing it for Latin, you definitely see a lot of influence of that in the Indian typography used today. Number one, uh, space and punctuations are not native to any of the Indian scripts. Um, you don't see that coming into the Southeast Asian scripts yet, probably because they're too fast, because <laughs> they're not influenced as yet. So space punctuations were introduced by Latin. So now you have words, you have like commas and full stops, but they were not there before. It's easier, makes it easier to read, makes it easier to design as well. Um, contrast is not native to all. Uh, 
um, but you know it's also scripting. You have you can design font with high contrast for all scripts today. Serif is not native, um, but you do see people designing uh, typefaces with serifs. Um, for me, it looks very funny because, like one of my previous speakers said, I've never read Camel with a serif before. If, if somebody does that for text typing, I find it very difficult to read. Italics is not native either. Right? <laughs> people use italics because it's available in word processors and uh, typesetting software because there's a slanted eye button. So they click on it, there's a machinized or mechanical italics that's available. It's not uh, the designer's choice. So what do people do for emphasis? We don't know. That's another area of, of, of uh, possibilities that we can explore. What, what can we do for emphasis in an Indian language where italics is not common, is not native? Right? Optical size. Um, I'll, I'll show an example at the end of the thing where you can adjust um, the, the counters of certain glyphs to accommodate for optical size. Yeah. In okay, so we've talked about um, the <coughs> original challenges, we've talked about what uh, the nature of Indian scripts. But why a family? Why, why do we need a family of Indian scripts? Unlike um, uh, you know, in Latin, you have so many languages written with the same script. So if you design a Latin font and include all the Latin tree extensions, you can write any of those languages with, or most of the languages in Europe. But in India, every state uses a different language, and every language uses a different script, and every script has a different grammar. Right? They, are, they are completely different. But they coexist. I mean, you can see single documents with multiple languages uh, used in the same document, in different paragraphs, especially in, bound, in, in border areas, right, where there's a boundary between two states where people speak both languages fluently, and you will see a lot of notice boards, sign boards, showing descriptions of both languages. Right? A common example is uh, the airport, all right? There are at least three languages in all the airports all over India, um, where you have the local language, you have the most widely used language, and then you have you also have Latin. And if if, if we can pay some attention, we can realize uh, uh, the typeface that is common across all these scripts that gives you the harmony. So that's the word. It's for harmony to to make sure that the scripts play well with each other in a uh, common environment. So what are the challenges in doing in doing this? <coughs> right. First. Um, different stroke forms, we, we, we saw that earlier. Right? They, are, they are completely different scripts. Although they originated from a common source, they branched out at a very, very early stage, and then they developed on their own. So they don't have that many commonalities uh, you know, among each other. So there are some scripts that are very line-oriented, there are some scripts that are loop-oriented, and, uh, you know, uh, and some are very complex in the, 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 the flow of the loops. This is an example of, uh, I mean, this is not a meaningful text, it's just some arbitrary text in various languages. If you look at the one that looks big, that's camel, if you look at the first letter, you, you see the number of strokes that cross over each other. Right? That is one of the most difficult letters um, in, in all of the Indian languages to put together from you. Because when I design a bold version of that, you can imagine the challenges you have. So even if you're doing an, uh, a low contrast typing, especially when you're doing a low, low contrast typing, but designing that uh, drift can be very, very difficult. So you have to introduce some, of, some form of contrast at some point. Right? Um, and if you look at it, you, you really don't see that they are playing well. Some scripts are dominating other scripts. Um, that, that's one of the challenges, and I'll talk about it shortly. Okay. Um, stroke density, right? Um, the, the camel has a higher stroke density. There are too many strokes crisscrossing each other. David Henry has a lesser stroke density. So how would you design to make sure that they, they flow together? Right? They work well, well together. That's a challenge. Um, 
matrices, the width of the clip, the, the line height can be different because although camel has a lot of strokes going in and out of the same letter, you don't see that many uh, descent. There are no letters go that you don't have any shape that go below a baseline, below a base letter. But in Devanagari, you can have stacked up. There you can have more letters below, just like how you have it in Burmese or in Khmer. Right. <clears throat> um, we talked about contrast and uh, weight variation. You can, and you can have higher weights in uh, script that have got lesser complex strokes, but you can't have that many uh, weight variations in script with too many uh, complex strokes that move away from each other. And the difference between a light and a bold will not be that much. Right? So how would you then show um, uh, boldness? How would you then show differences? You probably have to use a different typing. Right? So that, these are these are the carry over uh, from a typical mindset of oh this has to be bold this has to be this has to be italic so that some of that may not apply to some scripts. Um, right? We talked about emphasis. How do we handle this um, without uh, you know? Is, is italics the only way to do it? Right? And um, script dominance. We don't want when, when you want to have a harmonious uh, piece of document with all the various languages playing together, um, we need to make sure that uh, one script doesn't appear dominant over the other, especially when they, with the use of Latin. If you look at most of the typefaces in the operating systems today, um, when you type a, a document or when you create a document in an Indian language, the use of Latin is in, is is unavoidable. They use Latin in, in uh, phrases as a secondary script, as a reference uh, uh, link, and if it is not designed to stay together with the main script, the Latin can steal the attention away because it appears both big, it appears you know attractive enough to draw uh, the attention away. So script dominance is another big uh, issue. So the current state of all this, and I, I was talking to. People from Orissa this morning. Is what can, can people who are not native to the script design such practices? You can. Um, and there are many people who are doing it. Um, there's, there's plenty of display cases that are coming out. Um, although they are designed for individual scripts, um, but there are uh, areas where they design two, at least two or three scripts that play together commonly. Um, many type conferences are happening. New uh, foundries are emerging in India. I think some people are also here. Technology support is improving. As I said, the operating systems already support these scripts, so you don't have to worry too much about um, the, the rendering ability of the operating platform. Um, and non native speakers, when they design, they bring in new perspectives uh, to uh, the design uh, features. I'll just show you one example and then I'll end up talking. This is, right? We've seen this in Latin, where um, N, M, and H, they all share the same shoulders, but the width of the shoulders varies, right, for the optical uh, uh, harmony. We could apply that to an, an Indian script like Camel that also has loops. The, the, three, the first two characters are two different characters. They are the, the retroflex now. And uh, alveolar. Um, and in many times, in, in most of the typefaces that I, even I have designed, the loops are of the same size. And sometimes the, <laughs> the middle letter looks too big compared to the second letter. And these letters do come across together in many words. And likewise, the third uh, letter is actually a, a double sign, uh, it's not a letter on its own. And that, when it appears uh, next to uh, any of the two letters can appear to dominate over the, over the other. So we can use some of those features that we have read in Latin to adjust the time, the, the, the common spaces in these characters. So these are just some of the thoughts I wanted to share. On, uh, I, I will probably not do this like a level in an Indian type of conference, but I'm 
not well, not sure how many of you are familiar with this in fact, it's just going to give you an overview um, of uh, issues involved in designing packages for any language. There is a workshop on this tomorrow, so if you want to go in the details, we'll be very happy to discuss about this. And uh, thank the organizers for this opportunity. Thank you very much and enjoy. <laughs>